Um, give it up for Travis Owens. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. I got some uh, some stuff I got to get off my chest. That's why we're here. Uh, first is uh, I'm trying to think of how to word it. Um, I'm not gonna join LinkedIn. All right? Send me as many emails as you want to, dude. You keep coming all day long because I'm not signing up for LinkedIn. Who didn't tell LinkedIn that there's a Facebook page that? <sighs> I had no idea what LinkedIn was, and one of my friends was like. It's a career networking site. It's like, I live in LA, what's a career? I have no idea who's homeless in this city and who's not. I had no idea. Out of the kindness of my heart yesterday, gave a guy a dollar from my wallet, Johnny Depp. Why don't you take a shower, Johnny, and join the rest of the party? I got very weird, very quick. I'm not from LA, so it's hard to transition. It was tough for me. Because I didn't know, I wasn't aware of the who can be the most open-minded person in the world contest. Because I come from Texas. I like it. But in Texas, when we don't understand something, we just beat the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird. The most LA thing in the world happened to me yesterday. I went out of town for my birthday, got back. So I go to my girlfriend's house, and there's streamers and a happy birthday thing on the wall. Aww. And I go, huh. There's a little shock. And then she goes, true story. Those aren't for you, that's for my roommate's dog. <laughs> I lived that real life situation. Very awkward social exchange there. Oh, I didn't, no, 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 you know what's worse? Okay, this is worse. This is way worse of a social situation that I had to deal with. This is absolutely true, happened recently. If I had to name this story before I told it to you, I would call it Midget Surprise. <laughs> I, was, I was in the back of, of Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. It's really dark, and I'm sitting by the kitchen door, the swinging kitchen door. And I'm leaning against this wall, and I look eye level, so I look eye level, and I see either A, a ghost, or B, the midget I'm foreshadowing in the story. <laughs> It was B, uh, but I dealt with it absolutely horribly because I saw him uh, and jumped. <laughs> he didn't like it. He didn't like it at all. But I tried to play it off like I was just overly excited to see him. And that made it way worse. So it was this if I replayed it. And it started snowballing because I like got down on one knee to shake his hand, and it was with like, three fingers. It was... <laughs> oh, I screwed up. I screwed that one up. Uh, I'm not one for topical stuff. I'm not. But <sighs> Clay Aiken is running for Congress in North Carolina. 100% true. Clay Aiken misses American Idol himself running for Congress in North Carolina. The balls on that guy. That's inviting a, just a shitstorm of hate. And I applaud him for being able to stand and, I mean, because what's his stance anyway? Politically, if I was your senior, get off the stage, fag! Like, what? Unbelievable. Like, 
I miss Clay Aiken. You know why? You know why I miss Clay Aiken? That's true. Because music sucks now. Music sucks. What happened? What happened to music? Like there used to be alternative rock. It was a thing. It was I like it was Matchbox Twenty. It was Creed. It was great. It's like I by the way I miss Creed. That's how bad music sucks. You, do you know how it feels to me to tell you that I miss Creed? Can you take me high? That's the band that I miss. I can't get away from techno. Techno is something I can't get away from. It won't leave me. It's at every stoplight. It's out at every patio. I'm taking ecstasy and my protein shakes at the gym. I'm taking Molly in the sauna. That's weird because she's a bigger girl. It's just... <laughs> Thanks for the interaction. Good, 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 good. So yeah, music is just really pissing me off because it, and it's everywhere. It's every genre. Like this is very real. There was there was a guy that wrote the lyric, the country lyric, honky tonk, but dunk a dunk, and we made sure he got paid for it. A hundred percent real that that happened. I can't stand hip hop. I hate hip hop. I so much don't give a shit about diamonds in your teeth. I can't care. I can't care about it. I don't care about you making it rain on a stripper. Why don't you just hand her the money? Wouldn't that? You've seen the size of the heels. She can't bend over to get that. Just hand her the money. Make it rain on a charity. Make it rain on kids with leukemia, just on their bald little heads. Make it rain on that. But what, you know what I love is rap. I love rap. I love it because there's a story there. There's a life there. Tupac's one of my favorite artists ever. He's great. There's a story. I hear the doctor standing over me screaming, I can't make it, got a body full of bullet holes laying here naked, will it succeed? Something's evil in my IV, but every time I breathe, I think they're killing me. I'm having nightmares, homicidal fantasies. I wake up strangled and tangled in my bed sheets. I call the nurse because it hurts to reminisce. How did it come to this? I wish they didn't miss. There's substance there. There's a story there. You take Tupac to the gang fight. You know, you don't take to the gang fight Lil Wayne. <laughs> Lisa, baby. You can't even say his name at the gang fight. You gotta introduce him as Wayne. It's Lil Wayne. I'm not saying Lil. We're at a gang fight. Your name is Wayne. <laughs> Idiot. So stupid. Lisa, baby. It sounds like he's one of the Thug Seven Dwarves. I'm Weezy, this is Sneezy, Breezy, Queasy. And Drake. <laughs> Unbelievable, these guys, man. He's not the worst, he's not the worst pinnacle of horrible rappers. That title ultimately belongs to Ja Rule. Ugh. Who remembers Ja Rule? How could you, oh, how could you forget that mistake? What do you have that one song was uh, with J Lo? What would I be without you? What would I be without you? You'd be broke. Thanks, J Lo. <laughs> Thank you, J Lo. You'd be broke. And you, you can't, you can't tell your kid that's not his real voice. You can't tell your kids a good night story with that voice. Are you kidding me? Oh my God! You can't go in and just lay your kid down and. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. Dad, you're scaring the shit out of us. We just want to go to bed. Unreal. So, I'm, yeah, I'm from Texas. I don't fit in entirely. Like, one thing that I didn't, couldn't get totally was religion, because it's huge in Texas. And by the way, I don't care how many assholes pucker up. We're talking about religion, okay? We're doing this. We're running through this, all right? Because I felt bad. I felt bad for Jesus 
because a lot of the Christians I were raised around made it to the point where like, Jesus seemed like a great guy. But the Christians that I was raised around were like his drunk girlfriend that got to the party before him that stirred up a bunch of shit. <laughs> this, listen, guys. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Jesus. Jesus is coming. And he like told me to tell you guys that he like hates gay people. <laughs> like hates gay guys. I'm just he said he said it and I'm just I read it. <laughs> then Jesus gets to the party, he's like, eh. why does everybody look so mad? I told him that you said that you hate gay people. Why would you say that, Christine? Because I read it in a book. Because Matthew told Mark, and Luke told John, and John told Solomon, and he translated into English, and everybody got it. And I tried to tweet you about you on Twitter, and your Facebook page is a Facebook fan page. I knew, I knew the moment that I wasn't going to be good at church is when I found my first dirty picture at church camp. <laughs> That's how that shit happened. I was walking, I found a piece of paper with a dirty picture on it because they used to print them on paper. Uh, and no one was safe at church camp. I showed everybody. I was like, everybody's going to see what they're talking about Jesus made this week. So then I got found out. It was a Southern Baptist church camp, so this head preacher called me in. And he was like, Son, what do you think that Jesus would think of you carrying this right? He was it sounded like Bill Clinton. <laughs> what do you think that Jesus would think of you carrying this around and showing everybody at church camp? And I was I was a quick kid, so I was crafty. I had to think of something quick. I was like, uh, at least I'm not gay. <laughs> he was like, You're free to go. <laughs> turned out great, it turned out great. It turned out really great. Thanks. You know, another thing that I couldn't get used to that's so different here than Texas is dating. Dating is so weird here. Because socially, but socially, when did girls become the assholes? Socially? Because you can't hit on a girl anymore at all, ever. Anymore. You're really going to hit on me at a bar? You're really gonna hit on me at the gym? You're really gonna hit on me on Match.com? Yes. Because you paid to get hit on. That's about, online dating is so exclusive. Unbelievably exclusive now. So it would actually be, you're really gonna hit on me on black, Jewish, vegan, Christian, farmers only, dot net. <laughs> the addendum to that because that's what it would really be unbearable it's like i'm not dude i i'm not hitting on you i'm just asking if someone's sitting in this chair i think you're ugly as shit that's what i feel like saying it's so dating just baffles me right now and then girls are such assholes this is coming back around ladies don't worry <laughs> Girls are such assholes that they've made up their own language. They used to speak in sentences, and then they shortened the sentences, and now they're not speaking in total words. So they shorten the words. Totes, gel, sorry, not sorry, no filter, blessed. Are we talking about travel size hair gel? What are we talking about right now? But it's, it's, this is the issue, is that it's both parties' problems because nobody knows how to communicate anymore. Amen. Yes, very true. Here's what I think the kids need. Young people need to have to, have to, talk to the person that they're dating on the phone. Yes. <laughs> and not because I think that it will be good, it'll be a disaster. <laughs> But they need that humiliation. 
Young kids need to know what it felt like for me in junior high to talk to the girl that made me be her boyfriend on the phone. It was the, it was the worst. You have nothing to talk about. She got mad at me one time for not calling her, and I was like, you ever heard our conversations? What are you talking about? It's like, how, what do you want me to ask you? How was school? I don't know, you were there. It's like, we both know I'm gonna sit here and just breathe in your ear until your dad picks up the phone and tells you to go to bed. This is horrible. Dating, but kids need that humiliation, man. You know what? There is no way any girl could ever live how my dad met my mom. Not possible, because this is totally true. Not lying at all. My dad sees my mom in a bar, first time he's ever seen her in her life. I didn't believe this for seven years. She's walking by, he stops her, stranger to stranger, opens up a blazer she's wearing, looks her up and down and goes, you'll do. <laughs> That's totally true! A thousand percent true. If my, did that, if my dad did that today to any girl, he would be knocking on doors the next day, I'm Lamar Owens, I'm a sex predator. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out.
Hey, give it up for Fred Stiller. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, all right. Uh, so I think most of you guys are here for somebody um, to see them do fun stuff and funny stuff. Um, and he's going to come up right now. Um, he's got a camera back there, so make this really fun for him.